Good morning. We would all find much more success if we didn't think that we were right all the time. In today's rapidly changing world, we need to trade being right for experimentation. When you are right, there is little reason for you to find a better way. No reason to experiment with something new, to be creative, no reason to read about new ideas. So when you're right, you never discover the things that can change you and lead to your growth. Fortunately, technology teaches us that what we thought was right isn't. At least, not for very long. For me, the best measurement of our success is how quickly we are prepared to let go of something that you believe to be true. If you are able to be wrong about something that you thought was right yesterday, then you're on your way to great success. But we generally don't operate this way. We are taught from an early age to be right. We get A's and B's and F's. And in our organizations, we don't want to waste resources, so we try to be right before we make decisions. We also believe that our personal success stems from how good we are, and so we spend a large amount of time trying to be right so that we can prove ourselves to others. Being wrong over a longer period of time, well, that's fine. I mean, monolithic J2EE application servers that we did in the early 2000s, yeah, those were wrong, and we don't do that anymore. How we thought about automating server configurations in 2005. Oh wait, we didn't think about that. <laughs> How we built DMZ security zones in 2011. Well, we don't, we don't do that anymore. And how I thought about my life when I was in my 20s. Well, it's perfectly fine for me to have a different perspective now. But narrow that time frame down and it gets uncomfortable quickly. Admitting that you were wrong yesterday requires vulnerability. Or our recent new strategy, or a key decision that we made in our organization in May, well, we can't change that. What would people think? And yet, we know that the ability to change quickly leads to success. And this is deeply important to you because you work with technology. Yesterday, Barry mentioned how your organizations need you, technologists and engineers. Now more than any other time. And I agree. Your actions can determine the outcome of your businesses. That is how important you are today. And that is what I want to talk about today. But first, I should introduce myself. That was me, and I realize it doesn't look like me, uh, but I'm the chicken on the right-hand side. My brother Richard and I grew up the sons of a chicken farmer in Botswana, Africa. This is my parents' farm in the eastern part of Botswana. Growing up on a farm, I learned a lot, mostly that the only way to really solve problems is practically grounded in reality, as Adam mentioned. And I had a lot of interesting experience experiences. And yes, 
that is my mom with her pet porcupine. Uh, his name, as you might imagine, was Spiky. Uh, and thanks to the uh, miracle of modern technology and some folks in the back of the room, my mom is actually watching me live right now in Botswana. Hi, mom. My father's hope for me was that I would uh, take over the family business, but I had other plans for myself. My answer to the joke, why did the chicken cross the road, was to get to the computer on the other side. So I crossed the road and I went on to study engineering, and I built a career in IT. Like you, Technology and its application to try to build and help businesses has been my life's work. Today, I'm the chief technology officer for IT at Liberty Mutual Insurance. Now, a good way to be successful with technology is to learn about the technical aspects. That's why you are all here today, to see how others are solving problems and what they are building and creating. But there is a lot more than the engineering. Your success will come from leadership. And leadership comes from the intersection of many elements, most of them human factors. And by leadership, I don't mean climbing an organizational hierarchy or being somebody's boss. In the context of large organizations, people generally think that leadership really only applies to executives or to some management position. And we need to change that. By leadership, I mean the humble, authentic expression of your unique personality and talents in pursuit of bettering whatever environment that you are in. And we desperately need technologists and engineers to be leaders, to bring their authentic selves to work in pursuit of bettering our organizations, our communities, and our planet, quite frankly. Our world has many problems, and technology holds the potential to solve many, or maybe even all of them. From things like Hyperloop, to robotics that can help veterans who have lost their limbs, and technologies like zipline drones that hold the potential to transform the lives of billions of people in the developing world. Technologists and engineers can redefine the future. We can and need to be future builders, and this is our time. So how do we unlock leadership? To me, it's fundamentally about two things, learning and iteration, and the speed of those. We are all like icebergs with loads of hidden potential, hidden from others and very often hidden from ourselves. You unlock and discover this potential through effort, by doing, by experimenting, by trying which starts with you believing that what you are currently doing can be improved. The more that you believe that you are not right, the more you unlock a mindset that keeps you looking at how you can be better. And this be better mindset sets you on a journey of experimentation, of learning, and iteration. 
but many do not see the need for this journey because they believe that they are already right. Even though as time passes, we usually learn that things can always be improved and very different. So the question is simply this, what is your time frame? Is it days and weeks or is it years and decades? What we are learning at Liberty Mutual is that we have to change ourselves very quickly. We are a successful 100-year-old company. We have 900 offices in, across five continents and we're 73rd on the Fortune 100. But we also understand that our future is not certain because of the changes in technology. And this is true for all companies today. Changes in technology can undermine our businesses, but they are also unlocking huge new areas of opportunity for us. And we can harness these opportunities through the leadership and the potential of our people. From people's ideas and their creativity, from their experimentation and iteration. We all know of significant advances that have come from just a handful of people. Liberty Mutual is 50,000 people strong, and we have over 5,000 technologists working with technology. Just think of what we might accomplish as we unlock the leadership of all of these people. When one thrives, we all thrive. And so we challenge ourselves and we change ourselves. Change ourselves to work as entrepreneurs, like startups do, but within an enterprise and within the context of a company that has a strong foundation and many resources. We embrace experiments and learning. And we focus on people and teaming. And this mindset led us to Chef's technology. Multiple IT organizations came together to experiment with what you were building. And today, we see a whole new way of managing our servers and our infrastructure that we didn't see previously. And we wouldn't have found if we thought we were right about how we did this a few years ago. Which brings us back to truth. You see, you can't make progress unless you question things. In Shakespeare's plays, there was often the character of a fool. The fool is there to be honest, to say what others won't say. A good fool reflects the truth like a mirror for very important people, like Henry V, so that these important people don't only want to uh, don't only hear what everybody else in the court thinks they want to hear. Because without the fool, without somebody being honest, Henry V is always right. And similarly for us, without people questioning, without somebody being honest, or maybe even playing the fool, with us both individually and as teams, we don't see opportunity. And the status quo is always right. Until, of course, we learn that it's not. And that time frame is becoming shorter and shorter with each year. Because the rate of change in technology is, as we know, exponential. Since you all work in technology, you're already very familiar with Moore's Law. 
And you probably believe that you have a good grasp of exponential change. But exponential change remains a very difficult concept to grasp and very difficult to apply to our thinking. It's even more difficult to plan for in organizations. Our brains were literally not built to intuitively understand exponential functions. Let me illustrate this with a short story. A long, long time ago, there was an advisor who needed to help his prince see the truth. The prince had inherited a fortune and believed that his wealth was unlimited. Nobody could be honest with the prince for risk of insulting him. But the advisor was concerned about the prince's long-term success and his spending habits. The prince wanted to reward the advisor, and so he offered the advisor to name any reward. The advisor asked for a chessboard full of wheat. He asked to receive one grain of wheat on the first square of the chessboard, and then for it to be doubled on every subsequent square until the final 64th square. The prince thought his advisor was foolish. He laughed at this request. What? That's a measly amount of wheat. You are insulting my wealth, he yelled. You should have asked for something much more substantial. The advisor was determined, and even though the whole court laughed at him and mocked him for his measly request, he persisted. After the first week, after the eighth day, the first row of the chessboard, the advisor had received a total of 255 grains. Uh, that's a tenth of a cup of wheat. Uh, by the 16th day, second row, he had still only received 65,535 grains, or about 19 cups. Now, you know and you all know where this is headed. Uh, the prince thought his advisor was foolish because he couldn't comprehend the exponential function. He would soon learn, however, that he was unable to fulfill his commitment. To do so would require 18.5 quintillion grains of wheat. That's over one trillion metric tons. And although this is an old story, you all might be surprised to know that it would not even be possible for this prince to fulfill that commitment in 2016. Even if he won the 550 mega million jackpot from this past weekend, or if he owned the entire global production of wheat. In 2016, the entire global production of wheat across the planet was 731 million metric tons, which is less than one one-thousandth of the prince's commitment. So you see that it is very hard for us to get our head around exponential planning. And yet, that is what you must do with technology. This exponential change is not only happening in one technology. It's happening across multiple technologies, all at the same time. Robotics, mobility, storage, networking, augmented reality, artificial intelligence, gene splicing, and the list goes on. This is the backdrop of our lives. This is the backdrop of the world that our children are growing up in. Multiple technologies all advancing on their own curve and all combining together. And the result is that we have very little idea what can happen a couple of years from now. What will be right a few years from where we stand today. And that can be threatening, especially if you like to think you're right, or if you believe that what you know now 
will last for the rest of your career. The arcs of our career, our careers, are now very different. We used to be able to start and end our career within the same technology or within the same business model, and that is no longer true. Today, you have to keep reinventing yourself. You can no longer rely on being right or assuming that the knowledge that you have will last for many years. But you can change your mindset from one of knowing the answer to one of learning, experimentation, and iteration. In this context of exponentially changing layers of technologies that are, that are interwoven with no predictability, comes a responsibility for us as technologists and engineers. You have the responsibility to be a learner, to be way more honest with yourself and with others, to be prepared to be viewed as foolish, to be much more inquisitive about what might be and about how fast you learn. So as you finish your conference, don't only focus on the engineering. Be aware of all the people and the leadership here. Learn from others. Work on being really honest with them and with each other. Be foolish. And think about how you might change the world. Thank you.